Trey Lance is ready for his first NFL start on Sunday. Tall task, like the tallest of tasks, the undefeated Cardinals. Can the Niners pull off the upset? Hey, Baker Mayfield is in dire need of a big-time bounce-back game. Should the Browns be worried about their quarterback? And the countdown is on. Allen and the Bills, Mahomes and the Chiefs, Nick and his little ponytail. Oh, we got lots to discuss on this Friday morning. Hi, everyone. Welcome to First Things First. Jenna Wolf, Chris Broussard, Kevin Wilds. Nick, are we oh, looking to the right or left? Did, you, did we, do we have a little mini man bun today? No, we're, listen, no, it's, we a, don't. it's a football Friday. We're not talking about hair. Oh, we're talking about football, football. Friday. We're talking Let's about not get distracted. the Chiefs okay. are about to annihilate yes. Wilds' bills. That's what we're talking about, not gotcha. hair. We have more okay. important day. We're a serious show hair. today. We're a serious show. But I wore a ponytail. I wore a ponytail for you, Nick. Uh, let's do okay, it. Let's no talk more hair football. Talk. Before we jump we, let's, ahead let's to this weekend, to let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk some business. Thursday night football. Rams, <laughs> Seahawks. And after scoring only three points in the first half, Matt Stafford and those Rams came alive in the second. Now, Stafford was dealing with a sore finger on his throwing hand. Still threw for 365 yards and a touchdown. Rams get the win. They now improve to 4-1. and one. The story last night, though, the Seahawks. They lost more than just the game. Russell Wilson had to leave the game in the third quarter. Hurt the middle finger on his throwing hand when he knocked into Aaron Donald's helmet. Pete Carroll said it was badly sprained and Russ wasn't able to grip the ball. He did not come back. Geno Smith had to come in to replace him. Bad night overall for Seattle. They lost. They now dropped to two and three on the season. So let's check out your NFC West standings. Not going to be easy for Seattle if Russ misses significant time with that finger, especially, especially with that porous off defense, rather, of theirs. All right, Nick, do Seattle's problems go well beyond Russell Wilson's injury at this point? Oh, John, I'm glad we're starting here because I do think it is important that the audience know on this Football Friday there is a team that someone on this show picked to make the Super Bowl, dare I say win the Super Bowl, <laughs> who has a great quarterback and maybe the worst defense in NFL history through five weeks and is in last place in their division. And it is not my Kansas City Chiefs. It is Kevin Wilde's beloved Seattle Seahawks. And so while he casts arrows and stones throughout the weeks about the Chiefs defense, <laughs> Seattle, as we will discuss here, has major issues independent of their Iron Man quarterback, who has never missed a start, suffering, it's weird because it's a finger, but the most significant injury of his career maybe up to this point. Mm. I think Seattle was in huge trouble before Russ got hurt. If he misses real time, they are, they are on the brink of a season from hell because they are approaching the part of their schedule where they must rack up wins. They have Pittsburgh, New Orleans, Jacksonville. In that division, the NFC West, you've got to win the games you're supposed to win. They've already, in my opinion, Broussard lost two games they were supposed to win, the Titans and the Vikings. They, losing to the Rams is fine, but they were a mediocre team when Russ had nine touchdowns, zero picks, and a 130 passer rating through four weeks. Now they have a defense that can't get stops. They have an offense that might be temporarily relying on Geno Smith, and that is a recipe for disaster. So, yeah, I thought they were looking shakier than expected when Russ was out there. Now, Geno played well last night to his credit, but I don't think that's sustainable. But if Russ has to miss time, if they don't go 3-0 and over these next three, it's very hard to see how they get the 10-11 wins you're going to need to make the playoffs. So, yeah, if, I, if I'm a Seahawks fan, if I'm Kevin Wilds or Mina Kimes this morning, I am very, very anxious about what the next few weeks are going to look like for my team. Stressed out. Stressed out. Well, well Nick... I, I'm with you to a large degree. Obviously, if Russell Wilson is out for any significant amount of time, they're done. I'll go that far. They are done. And yes, Geno looked good. Hopefully for Geno, he may have gotten himself a job elsewhere in the future because he did look very good in the interception at the end of the game. Wasn't his fault. But Geno's not going to carry this team to the playoffs. And so they do need Russell Wilson. But Nick, I got to push back on you. It just makes me chuckle. 
the way you emphasize poor defenses of other teams, and yet exactly. you just <laughs> gloss over the poor defense of the Chiefs. Now, remember, a week yeah. ago, Pete Carroll was on the under duress list because he needed yeah. to oh. get this defense together. Honest. The defense is atrocious. The defense gives up more yards than even your Chiefs, Nick, and that's saying a lot because mm -hmm. they're both at the bottom of the league mm -hmm. in yards allowed on yeah. the offensive end. So they, they've got major <laughs> problems there. But you, you brought up some good stuff, this schedule, and that's why I'm not ready to bury them yet. I'm not sure if you're burying them yet, but I'm not going to bury them just yet because, one, Russell has nine days to get right, okay? They, it was a Thursday night game. So they don't play for another nine days. I would be a bit stunned if he doesn't play Sunday, the following Sunday against Pittsburgh. So I don't think he will be out for any stretch of games. And then you brought up the schedule, and they should they need to go three and zero oh, at the very least two and one. But to your point, they should go three and zero. Oh. And if they lose to Pittsburgh. Then on nine days rest, then I'm I'm I may be with you in saying they're done. They won't make it this year, but they still have uh, Nick a lot of opportunities to beat up some of those teams in their division. I mean that's yeah. one thing about playing in the NFC West. You do get to meet each other. It's tough, but if you can get a few wins against your opponents, you can take their records down too. So I'm not ready to bury them. Lose to Pittsburgh in nine days. And then I may be with Nick Wiles and, and saying that you're done. Okay, I'm going to make a few corrections. First, I'm, I'm going to talk about Geno Smith. Then I'm going to talk about our buddy Nick Wright. And then I want to talk about Jamal Adams. First of all, Geno Smith. He didn't play okay. He didn't play all right. He didn't play pretty good. He played straight up amazing. So if Russ is missing time and you could put okay. Geno in there, he threw okay. one touchdown. He's like, yeah, ice in the veins. I was like, man, you've been waiting on that one for a while. I didn't know you could do that. If you first threw your first touchdown in three years, he was ready for it. He played great. <laughs> Second of all, about the Seahawks events, they're not good. But the idea that Nick can come on national television and be like, oh, it's a major problem, not like my Chiefs, is <laughs> insane. That's like saying, like, you know, I wouldn't, go, uh, I wouldn't go swimming with bull sharks, but you can go swimming with great white sharks. Like, huh? Aren't you screwed both ways? Like, no, if you look at the numbers, one slightly more can dangerous. I respond Number to that? three, Jamal Before you get to Adams. Jamal No, Adams. no, I'm doing my thing. I Before said, Jamal, I said, I'm talking about three things. Okay, I got to talk about <laughs> Jamal Adams. Go talk, you can come back later. Here's Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams, I like Jamal Adams. But he had plays yesterday that boggles the mind. The play to Deshaun Jackson that bailed out a bad series from Stafford, he overruns it, gets totally lost. The replay is even worse. Like, Jamal, where are you going? Yeah. There's Deshaun Jackson. Scores. We dig into the numbers. Um, this is uh, Seahawks defense overall, specifically Jamal Adams. Most yards, you saw that, second most of the Chiefs. Adams the fourth hot, making a bunch of money. He's not playing well. He's got one interception last 46 games, zero sacks. And I know you're thinking, like, wild. He's got to be doing something out there, isn't he? Like, yes, he is. Unfortunately, tackling members of his own team is not good tape to show in the locker room. Like, hey, you know what? Here's he is tackling his own guy. Boom, have that. So big hit. Try to go for the other team, not the guys on your own team. So Jamal Adams, defense, get right. I am not as nearly as down as you guys are on the Seahawks. Russ can still make it work. If he's out, Geno can make it work. Defense needs to get better. Go ahead, okay. Nick. Now you can be mad at me. Say that the Chiefs are different. Okay, here we this go. is a, a here bunch go. here. First of all, everyone's happy for Geno, but Kevin Wilds is the only person in the continental U.S. who thinks it's sustainable, including Geno. <laughs> Gino is not waking up this morning like, oh, I'm about to do that again. He's like, oh, wow. <laughs> not sure where that came from, but that was fun. Time so out, that's time, first of time all. out. Second of all, yeah, uh, yeah, please. Go ahead, time. I bet you the Rams defense, oh. why shouldn't he feel like that? He just, he cooked up the Rams, the Rams uh, defense, was moving the ball. Yeah, Rams defense not been good this year, buddy. So, like, that's the other thing okay. that we need, we'll discuss when we talk about the Rams. They seem to really miss Brandon Staley. And so that's, you know, who's now the head coach for the Chargers, was their defensive coordinator. Okay. I'm glad, though, since you guys are so insistent on just shoehorning the Chiefs in every conversation, that you did bring up Jamal Adams. One of the reasons that I am not as concerned is like, well, they have Jamal Adams, who seems to be doing nothing. The Chiefs in the exact same spot do have Tyron Matthew, who does everything. I think he'll start to play better. But we can what save the, the Chiefs team? for the Bills conversation. 
We can, well, Chris Jones guys. pretty good player. Frank Clark getting healthier. But we can we can save the yeah, Chiefs for great, right? later discussion because this is the last day you guys are going to be able to, to to flaunt about the Chiefs, as we said, after they beat the Bills. But that's a, for later in the show. But let me address something about the Seahawks as a whole. I wonder if Russell Wilson knew this team wasn't that good. How much of Russell Wilson this summer Ooh. flirting with other teams? I don't want to go anywhere, but here's four teams you could send me to. Was <laughs> that I would go? He's to. been with this team for a decade, and he was like, "Yeah, we ain't got it. Like this year's team is not going to be able to compete for a championship." And he wanted to get out ahead of it because, again, going huh. into last night, the only quarterback in football with a better passer rating than Mahomes was Russ. He had nine touchdowns, zero picks, and an impossible 130 passer rating, and they were two and two. And so you look at Seattle's offense, you're like, you do have DK Metcalf, you do have Tyler Lockett. On defense, Jamal Adams is 